Hello everyone, this is Poet Plays, and welcome back to Slay the Spire. In the last episode, we got too greedy and met a grisly fate at the hands of the Gremlin leader. Caution will guide our hand this run. Let's jump right back into the game as the Ironclad. Because each season that I'm going to do in Slay the Spire is going to be determined by character. Act 1, Exordium. Greetings, I am now. That's interesting. Uh, we know now is a female now based on that uh, eldritch tome that we picked up last time. Choose. Okay, we gotta choose. Remove a card from her deck. Obtain a random common relic. Remove two cards and lose eight max HP. Or lose your starting relic. Obtain a random boss relic. I'm like, why would we remove anything from our deck? Like, honestly, why? Why would we do that? Why would we crimp ourselves that way? Let's obtain a random common relic, right not? I think that is the less risky of the options. Yeah, we got a Vajra. Start each combat with one strength. Dang, that's real nice. An ornamental relic given to warriors displaying glory in battle. Hmm, I wonder whether we would have ever gotten one. As the Ironclad, anyways. Unknowns, 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 unknowns. Uh, <laughs> we can go along this pathway up here, right? Avoid the boss or fight him if we want to. Uh, we can go this direction and then force ourselves to fight the boss, but I don't think that's a good option. So uh, let's actually do this. Yeah, let's go here. Yeah. We got this Vajra, which is real nice. So maybe that will entice us to fight the boss. Who knows? I'm gonna block, yeah, because we heal 6 HP at the end of combat, so I'm cool with taking 6 damage. Not really much to think about in like the first few like rounds of Slay the Spire, I think. Uh, we'll bash because he's about to uh, buff himself, so then we'll be able to deal more damage once he uh, gains all that block. So now we need to deal 15 damage, which is easier since he's vulnerable. And there he goes, he's just dead. So BAM! That's fantastic. Fire Potion, which just deals 20 damage straight. Uh, let's go with Cleave, I think. Yeah, let's go with Cleave, because it's 8 damage to all enemies. So it just still does 8 damage overall. But when we encounter, like, say, like a room full of Laos, uh, exactly right here, right, then Cleave is going to really, really help us. Uh, let's see. We could Cleave and Strike. If we Cleave, right, that deals 9 damage to all enemies, which is really, really, really good. Yeah, let's Cleave. Right, and then we have the option, I think, to kill this guy off with Bash. So let's do that. So he's dead. Uh, she's gonna debuff us, but I'm not sure what you're gonna debuff us with. Spit webs is okay, weakened, but that's fine. You're only at 3 HP. We can definitely just kill you. So that's cool. That was a good encounter. 11 gold. Uh, we had Intimidate before, and we had Ghostly Armor before. Um, Intimidate is interesting. Uh, let's see. I should actually go for Perfected Strike, because having that extra damage sounds real nice to me right now. Okay, so we got an Acid Slime and a Spike Slime. Uh, we could Perfected Strike or just outright kill this guy. Yeah, uh, hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, let's do that. Just kill him, and then just attack him. He's gonna debuff us, but that's fine. There's no point blocking after we've killed the Acid Slime, simply because like blocking does not prevent us from like doing, yeah, doing stuff like that. Um, eight, right? So I think I'm gonna bash, and then we'll defend, and then we'll be able to heal up to max HP next turn. So he's gonna draw all those strikes, and that should be able to kill him next turn. So that's cool. Got that slimed, but that's cool. We're definitely drawing these strikes, and then he's just gonna die, and he's just gonna die. So that's good. That's good. Just keep going. Let's keep playing. Uh, clothesline, intimidate. Clothesline is interesting because it's twelve damage and applied two weak. It's a bit like Bash, except that it deals more damage. I think if we upgrade it, it deals more damage, but it does not increase the amount of weak that is dealt. Uh, we're not going for an Anger deck, because if we're really gonna uh, use Perfected Strike, then we can't have more than, like... We can't have excess cards, like, mucking up our deck. Uh, which includes Clothesline, believe it or not. Um, you know what? Let's take Clothesline, because I think it's cool so far. I think we can fight this boss. I think we can do that, uh, but at the same time, you know what, let's go along this path, right? So we have the option of healing before we fight this boss. I think that is the safer option. 
Okay, we got the we got the fungi beasts. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> we get clothesline here because that deals nine. Oh, we can do nineteen damage. Wow, that's yeah. Let's actually do that. Let's clothesline so he's weakened. And then we can actually go. No, no, we don't have enough energy for that. Um, we could just pummel, go all in on this guy, really. But it's really sad that we drew perfected strike at the same time. Uh, I'm cool with losing. You know what? Actually, let's just block. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, because he's now permanently going to deal less damage to us, which is okay. Now like, he's going to deal less damage to us next turn, which is cool. Uh, in this case, we shall... we can block twice. If we block twice, right, we will take 3 damage. If we block once, we will take 7 damage, which is more than our burning blood can heal. But then we can bash, and I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna bash, and then we'll accept a little bit of HP. Loss of a little bit of HP, because we need to make... Like, the trick for these guys is to make sure you kill them around at the same time, really. Okay, that's actually 8 damage. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, cleave is nice, that's cleave, so that deals more damage, uh, then they just die, so that's fantastic. That is fantastic. Okay, more gold, add a card, uppercut. Now I really, <laughs> no, I, don't, I really wish we didn't pick clothesline now, because uppercut is real nice. It's one weak, one vulnerable. I think if we upgrade it, it's two weak, two vulnerable, which is fantastic. Uh, yeah, let's take uppercut. And, um, it's a lot of two energy cards right now, which is not good, really. We need to get rid of the, some of them, if we can. No, it's not fantastic. Uh, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I think, objectively speaking, let's bash like that. Then uh, we'll draw other cards, like uh, like Uppercut and Clothesline, that deal a lot of damage. That's cool. Okay, so he's gonna attack us, but that's fine, because now he's like vulnerable. Uh, we're gonna go Uppercut here. And then we shall block all this damage. So that's cool. That's really, really good. So we, we keep stacking that vulnerable on him. And hopefully we draw... Yeah, we're definitely drawing Clothesline next turn, which is fantastic. It's really, really good. So we shall Clothesline, keep applying that weak, and then we just kill him. So that's fantastic. Fantastic. Attack Potion, that's real nice. Uh, let's go Twin Strike, because we want to build up strikes, because we have that perfected strike. So let's go here. No point in healing, so let us smith. It'll be, yeah, upgrade uppercut. That's nice. If you upgrade, oh, so if you upgrade clothesline, it does apply more weak. That's nice. Uh, deals three additional damage. So if you upgrade a perfected strike, it'll deal one, two, three, four, five, six, six multiplied by three is 18. So that's 18 plus, wait, if you upgrade, that's 18 plus six, which is actually 24. So that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Uh, <laughs> that's a meme right there. Yeah, I think... Uh, hmm. <laughs> what would benefit us the most right now? I think if we upgraded Uppercut, to be honest. Hmm. Yeah, I think we upgraded Uppercut, to be honest. I think that's nice, because... I always like buffing the amount of like uh, debuffs that we can deal to the enemy, and um, let's fight this elite. Why not? I think we can do it. Ah, okay, it's the Lavangulin. Okay, that's not fantastic, really. Uh, I think we just go all in. How much damage can we deal to this guy? Oh uh, yeah, let's just go all in right now. Let's wake him up. Yeah, because there's no point. We can't set up or anything. So he's stunned. Hopefully we get something to like debuff or something. Uh, this is interesting. If only we had more energy, right? You know. Uh, let's actually use this fire potion right now, so it's easier for us to kill him. Um, I think uppercut is better because that reduces damage taken and everything. And yes, we're gonna take 13 damage, but I think we will do this. We kill him faster. Yeah. Okay. I think this is cool. Yeah, we run out of energy, that's fine. Okay. We take 13 damage, but actually we'll heal 6, so we actually only took 7. So that's fine. Uh, clothesline is interesting, but I think we'll apply... Hmm. Yeah, let's apply this defend, and it's either bash or clothesline. Let's go clothesline, though. Let's keep ensuring that he deals less damage to us. So, 
We're less, we will take less damage. Yeah, I think that's better. Better for us. Okay, so he's gonna debuff us, but that's fine. Uh, let us then, let's go all in. No point applying the weak again, I feel. Because he's so close to death. Let us strike and then he's just dead. So that was a good elite boss encounter. We get the fossilized helix, which we've seen before. We get a poison potion, which is real nice. We could get inflame or perfected strike. Um, let's go get inflame, because gaining two strength is nice. And of course it gets consumed. So, fossilized helix, seemingly indestructible. You wonder what kind of creature this belonged to. All hail Lord Helix. <laughs> Belong to an ammonite, I think. Uh, the serpent. You walk into a room to find a large hole in the ground. As you approach the hole, an enormous serpent creature appears from within. Ho ho ho! Hello, hello! What have we got here? Hello, adventurer. I ask a simple question. The most fulfilling of lives is that in which you can buy anything. Do you agree? So we can gain 175 gold, but then be cursed of doubt. Which means, at the end of our turn, get one week. Which is a pretty bad curse, right? Considering everything. And, uh, but we do have a lot of gold, so I'm gonna disagree. The serpent stares at you with a look of extreme disappointment. I'm sorry, but I do not want to accept your curse. No thank you, please. A letter opener. Every time you play three skills in a single turn, deal five damage to all enemies. Well, that's interesting. The description reads, unnaturally sharp. <laughs> it's so sharp that when we use it, it damages other people too. Okay. I'm feeling a little greedy. Can we actually deal with the- yeah, I feel we can deal with the boss. Let's fight another boss, let's do it. It's the gremlin knob, okay. We have the fossilized helix, which is real nice, so that's cool. Um, let us uppercut, So that's gonna really debuff him right off the bat. And then we'll just cleave to do more damage. And there we go! And hopefully we can deal enough damage soon. We did not discard perfected strike, right? So that's good, this is really good. He's gonna roar, so every time you play a skill, you gain two strength, but now he only is dealing four damage to us, so that's okay. Um, in this case, then, I might not play in flame. Well, let's see, let's just bash first, right? And, um, let's see. We will definitely draw clothesline next turn, applying weak, and when you're weakened, you do 25% less damage. So it's cool, I think. Let's play in flame. He gains, and that's a power, so, okay, so that's fine, that's off limits for him, okay. So we should have played that first, but that's fine. So, get hit first, but we have the buffer, which helps us out a lot. Uh, let us, ooh, we can either perfect the strike or twin strike. Yeah, let's perfect the strike and then twin strike, let's kill him. So that's fantastic, that was a really good boss encounter. A sundial, every three times you shuffle your draw pile, gain two energy. We get a dexterity potion, which increases the amount of block we get with cards. And we get clash, pommel strike, or blood for blood. Cost one less H energy for each time you lose HP this combat, deal 18 damage. Um, let's play blood for blood. I'm gonna get it, because the longer, this is like for boss combats, because the longer we play, right, the cheaper it'll get. Yeah, so I'm cool with that. Uh, what's a sundial? What's the description? Early man's foolish obsession with time caused them to look to the sky for guidance, hoping for something permanent. Zaroth. Well, well, nah, I wouldn't hesitate to call them foolish, but yes. <laughs> obsession with time, you know, with permanency. Scrap ooze. Wow. I'm very tempted to go with the scrap ooze. Yeah, that's why not. See whether we get lucky. We are not getting lucky. One more. One more. This is like gambling, except with our lives. There we go. And paper frog. <laughs> PH instead of F. Enemies are vulnerable. Take 75% more damage than 50%. That is fantastic. Essentially because we have two cards that apply vulnerable. So that is fantastic. Uh, let's go to this unknown room. Let's see what we get here. Oh, a wing statue. We can remove a card from our deck, or we can destroy to gain more gold. Um, actually, let's just destroy to gain more gold. Like, what would I actually get rid of? Like, clothesline, maybe? Mm, not really. Yeah, let's just destroy it, because I want as much HP as possible. Uh, who? With all your might, you hack away at the statue. It soon crumbles, revealing a pile of gold. You grab as much as you can and continue onward. 
Can we fight another elite? Let's do it. Let's fight another elite. We're fi fighting the Hexaghost, which is cool. I think we can do this. Yeah, we can definitely do this. Uh, let's go here, and then let's go here, and we should be able to kill this sentry next turn. We take no damage because of the fossilized helix, so that is nice. That's really, really nice. Uh, we're fighting the Hexaghost. Okay, cool. That's fine. I believe we can do it. And then, yeah, so next turn, I think we will only... Yeah, we only absorb 9 damage because we can kill him. Uh, hmm, hmm, hmm. Cleave is actually really tempting. Yeah, you know what? Let's cleave. We shall inflame, and then we shall just kill you. Right? Oh, we should have inflamed first. I keep forgetting. Never mind, it's fine. We'll just take 9 damage, and that's cool. We'll just heal when we get to the boss instead of, uh, instead of, uh, smithing. So let's do that. Mm -hmm. Blood for blood. Okay, that's not a fantastic time to draw that. Uh, we're gonna take 9 damage again, which I'm not stoked about. Uh, we can block. Uh, that's 16 plus 9. 16 plus 9 is 25. Uh, or 15 plus 16, which is 20... Uh, 2031. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, no, but we can only do, yeah, so that's actually strike, because it'll deal more damage than just playing clothesline. Because the artifact, because of their artifact, which is like, negates debuffs. So this, this sentry is definitely dead next turn. Uh, we are in need of a heal though, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> uh, yes, but this is our strategy's working well so far, so we'll just kill you, and then we shall bash, because that deals more damage. Artifact deals with that, but that's fine. I think we can block again. Yeah, which is okay. Yeah, so this is fine. This is okay. We draw all days though, which is like absolutely fantastic. This is just luck right here. <laughs> but this is fine. We absorb 9 damage. We're not in the worst of situations, but we're not in the best of situations either. Let's just strike. No point in defending because it'll all go away. And since all our attacks are apparently left in our draw pile, we're gonna kill him next turn. Or it. We're gonna kill it next turn. There we go, dead. Nice, 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 nice. Question card, future card rewards have one additional card to choose from. That is really, really good. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, Hamokini says lose three HP but deal 14 damage. Uh, let's actually go with strike again, simply because of our perfected strike. Let's actually read the question card. Those with more choices minimize the downsides to chaos. Kublai the Great. That is actually true. Right, because the more choices you have, the more control you technically have. Let's kill this enemy. It's a thief. It gonna steal our gold. So I hate thieves. Um, we could block for five because we are gonna heal. Uh, but we need to kill him fast, or else he's gonna run away with all our gold. So I'm cool with this. I'm cool with this. I'm gonna save our potions for the boss. Yeah, so I'm gonna deal five, and because of our buffer, ah, I shouldn't have bothered because we had our buffer. Okay, let's twin strike, and then we shall twin strike, and then we shall block. And that's cool. We shall heal. So we'll start off. We won't lose HP. Yeah, he'll just die next turn. Yeah, perfect the strike. Boom, dead. There we go. And perfect the strike deals 23 damage now. That is fantastic. We got body slam, headbutt, or rampage. Increase this card's damage by five this combat. Ooh. So we keep playing it, the better it gets. But it's like a setup card, and I don't really like it. Um. We get power through, but then it adds wounds to our hand. Hmm. Um. Body slam does not synergize very well. So let's just get power through. We need a card that, like, uh, really, really, like, helps us block a lot. So let's rest, gain back as much HP as possible, and let's go fight this Hexaghost, ladies and gentlemen. It's not gonna do anything the first turn, so we can do whatever we want. Let's, uh, hmm. Let's actually drink this so we actually gain more block. Do I want this attack potion? Yeah, let's drink it. Why not? Uh, what do we get? Sever soul. Exhaust all your non-attack cards in your hand. And we don't have any of them. So let's sever soul right now. Yeah, let's do that. So that's essentially a really good thing. Um, let us... We could either... We could either perfect, perfect the strike or uppercut. I feel uppercut is best in this scenario, and then we'll twin strike for the most amount of damage. So boom, boom, boom. This is cool. It's okay first turn. So this Hexaghost is gonna wake up. 
now we're gonna fight it. 18 damage, not fantastic. Um, let us block, and then let us dash again, so he deals more vulnerable. This Paper Frog is nice, we actually never read the description. The paper continually folds and unfolds itself into a shape of a small creature, which would be a frog. Apparently they don't know what frogs are, maybe because that's because of the spire blight we heard about. Oh, ouch. Yeah, I don't like multi-hit hits attack like that, because it, it negates our fossilized helix. Um, hmm. We shall definitely clothesline in this case, and then we shall cleave here. Yeah. This is good. This is good so far. The Hexabills deals like minute damage, and then deals a ton of damage and ultimate between the two. Uh, we're definitely inflaming first. Uh, we can either power through, or... Hmm, 17 blocking. No point, that's just over blocking. Uh, I think what we should do instead is that we shall bash. Keep up that vulnerable. Yeah, we'll take the 6 damage, it's fine. If we need to, we'll use the poison, because the poison will deal 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 damage. So that, I believe, is 11, 15, uh, 15, 18, 20, 21. It'll do 21 damage total to it, which is fantastic. Uh, 6 HP, huh? Eight, 19 damage or 25 damage? 25 plus 11. Yeah, let's do 25 plus 11. Let's perfect its strike, and then let's cleave. Yeah, that's cool. We'll take 6 damage, but that's fine. It keeps searing us, but I'm cool with that. Because we're definitely dealing more damage than it is dealing damage to us. It's gonna buff, which is... Not good, I think. Um, yeah, to maximize this, I'm gonna reapply the vulnerable and leap, and then we'll strike again. The seer is not good, but it's fine. And he's gonna block, but we can definitely deal more damage because of the paper frog, which is real nice. He's gonna deal 10 damage to us, which is fine. Blood for blood now is super cheap. So as I told you, that was fantastic. The ghost, because we beat that boss. So gold and a card to our deck. Haha, <laughs> this is nice. Uh, offering, huh? Dark Embrace. Remember, a card is exhausted, dark card. Nothing like that. We don't have anything like that in our deck. We can Reaper, which is real nice. We can double tap. Next attack is played twice. Um. Hmm, I'm really tempted, but we have a lot of cards in our deck that are like two energy at this point, so I'm very. I'm very tempted. Uh. Let's get Reaper, because there's a potential to heal a lot because of our Paper Frog. But let's see, Velvet Choker. Gain energy but cannot gain more than six cards at a turn. Fusion Hammer, cannot smith at rest sites. Okay. Uh, Coffee Dripper, no longer rest at rest sites. Velvet Choker, cannot play more than six cards in a turn. Um, really, we're only playing like... Really, I'm like... This Velvet Choker isn't really going to affect us if we play it, simply because we only have, if we, if, we ha if we get it, we will only have like 3 energy, we will have 4 energy every turn. But here's the thing, right, we have cards that cost like 2 energy. So best case scenario, like worst case scenario, we're only playing 2 cards, or 1 card if you decide to play Blood for Blood for whatever reason on our first turn. But best case scenario, we're playing 4 cards. And then Velvet Choker doesn't really like affect us in this way. Because we have a lot of cards that cost two H two like two energy. I do want to keep resting and I do want to keep smithing, so we'll take the Velvet Choker. Immense power but too limited, says Kublai Khan. Huh, I wonder whether he wore it before. And we now get to the city in record time, ladies and gentlemen. That is just amazing. Ah, <sighs> wow. This like kind of reminds me, and I'm going to bring up our question of the day today, which is, what is your most memorable run? You can put your answer down in the comment section below. Like for me, our most memorable run was, um, was when I was playing the Silent, I had this poison deck, and there's this card called Catalyst that triples the poison on a target, and I had about like 56 poison because I had uh, Bane and Poison Stab and Envenom, so I was building up Venom and poisoning the Time Eater in the third act, right? He had 56 poison on him, then I tripled it with Catalyst, and he just died in like the next two turns. Like, he was just like super easy. <laughs> that was my most memorable run. I think next episode we shall go up this path. Just look at all this. Look, <laughs> look at all this unknown sights. That is just amazing, and we'll fight an elite, and then we'll keep going. 
And uh, yeah, we'll just take a break here. Thank you guys so much for watching my playthrough of the Ironclad and Slay the Spire. Tune in next episode to see whether we'll survive the ordeals of Act 2. My name is Poet Plays, and until next time, stay safe.